Okay, good morning. Um, I'm going to make my video today of how I how I was saved, and um, I've come back to the location where uh, over 20 something years ago I uh, called out upon the Lord, having faith, and He saved me. He answered my prayer, and I'm going to give a brief testimony and brief background of how I came to that point and the experience and then what followed. Uh, so I hope you uh, enjoy. Um, I'm going to go for a little cycle. got my bike cam. Um, you can hear some cows in the background. There's some cows uh, grazing in the woods. So if I can see them, I will film them. <laughs> Here we go. That was a bit too bumpy for the camera. Let's see you see these cows. The old car. Like two cars. I'm not going to go and speak them. Really. I think they're speech. By the trains. Anyway, four things. This is roughly the uh, course I took those many moons ago. Um, I'll just stop here because it's. Uh, it's, it is funny, it's serious, and I can laugh, and uh, oh, I've got a gentleman coming, so I'll, I'll just pause. Right, um, now I was 23 and uh, I was living at home, um, not the home I'm in now, where my parents were living. Um, it, it'd probably been five, six years after my brother was killed. Um, that was devastating and that's like a death, everyone experiences a death. and. The family that you were is no longer. So that was one of the reasons that maybe we'll look for the purpose of life a bit more seriously. Um, and that led me on my journey of repentance and onto faith in Jesus Christ. Now, now one of my things is addiction, and it, uh, uh, I've. Uh, since I've been saved, I've, I've, you know, I've wanted to understand this problem, and I've, I've always had a problem with addiction, smoking, and drugs. Uh, thankfully, the, the drugs were, when I was saved, the Lord took it away from me, all of it, and I kind of slipped back into smoking, and when, when I hit despondency, now on the. <laughs> On the way to, I, 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 at the time, I needed to get out of the house, and I just needed that bit of space. I want, and I heard a testimony that um, from a counsellor. Now he wasn't allowed to tell me what faith he was, but he, I asked him a question, and he said, uh, I said, "Oh, do you believe in God?" And he said, "Yes." Now he didn't, I didn't know anything about this man, his his background. And he said, if you if you want to know the father, he said, you need to recognise his son. And that's all he said. And and I he said, if you you know, and and he said, if you you want to pray to the father, you need to you know believe in the son and call upon call upon his name. 
and that's that just had such an impression on me and I thought that well that makes so much sense who what father in their right mind would grant anyone anything if they denied his his son and that night I just couldn't wait to go and uh, put it to the test so this was my moment and I'd reached a point in my life I was desperation this man was a grievance counsellor I didn't want to be there I was compelled to go there by uh, just people around me being concerned and pushing me in that direction and I, 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 I can't have thought well you know maybe it'll do me some good and it, and it did do me some good but it also opened some doors some very evil avenues and I'm going to go into that um, probably some other time and I needed somewhere to just get out and appropriate my faith to put that put, you know to go and put that to the test my heart would just want I just had a glimmer of hope in my life that uh, the Holy Spirit was leading me through many circumstances to just keep 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 going on to keep don't give up because I, I just wanted to kill myself and I couldn't because I couldn't put my parents through any more grief and I was just suffering it all myself I, I just did have nowhere to turn to and I didn't want to be to this counsellor so when I heard that brief testimony it, it struck me deeply and I just wanted to go and excuse me put, it to, put the Lord to the test so about two three o'clock in the morning it was it was black and I and I where I'm going, there's a little place I, I, I just like to, you know, a bit, just my little retreat is a, a peaceful place, a little tree in a, an old farmer's field. And, uh, and that's where I got on my knees. But on the way, I thought, well, I, you know, I want to make a bit of an effort. I don't want to go just all scruffy and full of sin because I'm still doing drugs. I'm still doing... Um, uh, I was still smoking, still drinking, still cussing, still swearing, and uh, I thought, well, I'm going to make an effort. I want to. I was putting away the drugs. I was sick of the drugs. I just didn't want it. But I couldn't. I didn't know. I didn't know the escape. So I was just trying my best. So I, I didn't. Uh, you know, in hindsight, I didn't. I didn't really need to do that. I just needed to. You know, call upon the Lord first, and then allow Him to fix all those problems. But I was trying, you know, just trying to meet Him. I thought, I, you know, it's a decent thing to do. And uh, I, came, I stopped here and I threw my tobacco and my lighter deep into those brown. Now they were fully grown in the in the spring, in the summer, near the spring. So all that bracken was like dense, green, and the old bracken in there. And I threw my tobacco tin and lighter. And then I, and I continued. Now, uh, now um, you'll hear my experience in a minute, but on the way back, I, I, I just needed a cigarette. <laughs> I just thought, oh, I can't go any longer without a cigarette. And I found myself wading through there. And, and, it, and, it, and it was such a funny experience. It was like the Lord chuckled. And, and, but after that, thankfully, I put it away. He helped me. He helped me get rid of it, but later on it came back because, you know, there's some undermining problems in my life that the Lord was teaching me. But I wanted to just be honest and add that, include that. I'm not, I'm not um, holding smoking up. I, I'm just like look, looking at it from a, you know, a realistic sense of humour. Um, all vice is disgusting. Um, all, all natural things other than really what you need, food and water are selfish they're just the, the, the desires which go pull you away from what's important in life and they will peel you off the truth and that that's the same for anybody whether they're a, a saved born again christian or they're a, a a good con a conscientious person in life trying to do what's right there's always something to distract you and pull you off away from your family away from the important things in your life and sometimes in life you have those near misses and it brings you right back to the you know the hot spot the focus you know what it shows you what's what your priorities in life are you know it sharpens your focus on what's what's valuable and what's not valuable and and this these little um, these these are problems that can be ironed out the smoking and addictions and it and it takes understanding and it takes grace it takes the grace of the Lord to help you 
do what sometimes you can't do for yourself. Some people can just give up easily. Other people, they've got a big hole in their life and it's always going to be needed filling. And if you haven't got a disciplined Christian walk, it, it's very easy to fall back into those old patterns that you've dug or that big hole you've dug and go and fall back into it, resurrect the old nature. It, 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 it's... Um, it's always there to fall back into if you're not if you're not single to the your first love your first faith where you first begin and that's where i'm going to head to now my first the first point of contact with with the almighty um heart to heart spirit to spirit the, the my first love it, and the free gift of eternal life and salvation so i'm going to cycle gently up to the field and give a, a, a brief testimony I can't, <laughs> it's a little model aeroplane I'm trying to capture, I can't, can't see it on the screen. <laughs> anyway, there he is. I sight him. <laughs> Enthusiasts. Hello. Yeah. Hi, yeah. All right. Well, oh, this is where I came. This is, uh, let's see if I can get a shot of me. Tree. My oh, sight's terrible. Right, it's right by that car. So where that tree is over there, where those cars are parked, I went down to the tree in the, in the night and I called with all my heart, believing, I believed. And I said, Lord, I need you, I need your love. Do you love me? I believe in Jesus Christ. And as soon as I said that, I felt this overwhelming joy and peace. I was so happy. And everything was just washed away. And I could I was praising, I was rejoicing, singing, shouting my head off. And I walked home. And uh, <laughs> It was there that I knew that the Lord had answered my prayer faithfully. And I walked and I went and told my parents. I told everybody I knew, but they didn't want to know. So that was the beginning of my journey. But one of the most serious things I want, want to uh, add to this is once I realized that God lives, I knew that Satan was a reality 
and he was waiting and I spared after that that joy that joy didn't last because I was a sinner and I had um, was just beginning my journey of putting that old life I went to my I left my friends they didn't want to I didn't want to be there they didn't want me there and that's how you begin your walk and you sat, Satan's there to hammer you and corner you and I was cornered I didn't have a prayer life I didn't really pray again I, I was just basking and appreciating in that that love and that light um, basking's not I suppose not the right word because that's a snake but I was just just appreciating and enjoying and uh, I began, the Lord began to work and help me resolve those things. And build, you know, discipline. The Lord um, won't be mocked. Um, I started, I never, I, I never knew about um, witchcraft and Satanism and all this stuff. And I started to get an interest in it. And that, that's a dangerous ground. And of course, Satan's there waiting to sift you and smash you and so I, you know after this I didn't know any Christians I didn't know I didn't trust religion so there I was on my own and I began this awful journey and I'm going to cover that on another video because I want to just keep this as that that experience of um, that joy and that peace and that miracle that that reality that once you put your heart and trust and believe and you have to believe and you you uh, you know all the all the years up until that point I was getting sicker and sicker of the world I was more getting disgusted with my own behavior and I wanted to change and I and no matter how hard I tried to separate myself I was, it just become self-destructive and I found another pattern of sin to, to a washing machine cycle to um, fall into so I come to my end I, I, I knew that I needed saving I needed hope and that was the door that was the way the Lord the Holy Spirit drew me and gave me that hope to carry on to that point because once I was saved I, I knew I you know from there I've been able to endure everything that's been put in my path not that I relish it or want it but the Lord's got me over every obstacle, every problem, every battle he's fought and assured me of the victory that I received in the first place. And God is faithful, so if this is um, anyone who's looking for hope in life, looking for answers, that's the only place you're going to find the truth and the answer to all your prayers, all your problems, all life problems. Come on, Tally. Tally, come. It's a beautiful, glorious day. And, uh, Hello. <laughs> I'm just being greeted by lots of dogs and um, there's lots of witnessing opportunities here going on so I'm going to pause the camera and give my testimony to people right all the best to you